Hey friends, it's the Drive to School podcast. I'm Pastor Goodman and Pastor Richard is joining me again today. Uh, we are answering, what does Jesus say about stuff? Pastor, how you doing? Doing okay, buddy. Good to see you. You too, man. How you been? Uh, you know, I was just mentioning earlier to you, uh, yeah, full season, football season's off, went down south, watched my son play some football. And uh, so I went south and my daughter was playing volleyball uh, here in uh, Minot and Surrey. So we kind of split the family. And uh, so, yeah, they both won their games. So pretty happy. That's awesome. That's that's a very full schedule, too. And the, the whole family gets spun up going different directions. That's just something else to keep track of. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, so I'm going to take uh, no nothing tonight. So no midweek service confirmation hasn't started. So tonight I'm going to take a little bit of a break, head back home early and have some family time. So it'll be good. Awesome. Yeah, we're starting up next week, too. I can't wait. Yeah, it's good. All right. So today I think we're going to try. Uh, what does Jesus say about ego? Um, yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, I mean, you think about the word ego, right? I mean, it's ego is kind of, I don't know. I mean, what do you think when you hear the word ego? I think of arrogance or I, I like yeah. puffed up, right? You know, right. Uh, when, you, when you have ego, you kind of walk with a chip on your shoulder, maybe. Right. You think you think way too much of yourself. And, and usually that's not content in sort of a, a self-reflection. Like when, when somebody has a lot of ego, it's, it's that they want to, they want you to think a lot of them too, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, so the way that you carry yourself is, is yeah. You the nose in the high nose in the air, a little bit higher. Maybe you walk with a, an Eagle strut, right. You know, maybe with a cool walk and, and uh, there's a showiness to it, to, to be right, to be the center of attention um, to be, yeah, to be right, to, to feel whole, to feel uh, you, you got master and commander of the universe. You got it all together. Uh, right. Boys. And that's, that's a perilous thing to maintain though, right? To be right about all the things all the time in front of all the people. Uh, it, it takes either a, a lot of sort of cognitive dissonance um, or, or, or just a, a, a whole, whole, whole lot of work. It's, it's, it's a crushing thing. Yeah. I was, I was just gonna say, yeah, it just, it's, it's exhausting when you really think about it. I mean, we, we all want to do it, right? We all want right. to, we all want to have our stuff together. We want to, we want to act like we have it together and it feels good to be like, you know, you have it together. Right. And people look to you and say, wow. And you feel you know, when people are looking at you, you feel impressed and you, you impress yourself, but man, it's, it's, it's a disaster to uphold that kind of stuff. The amount of energy that it takes to uphold the ego is it's exhausting. It's so exhausting. Right. Yeah. And, and I actually, I don't think this is something that our Lord sort of wants to leave us in that this sort of constant struggle to always be justifying ourselves, to always look good, to always feel good. Um, and, and if you want that to be your life, honestly, I, I think he's going to sort of take it from you the hard way. It's a gift though, right? Yeah, you know, I was we were talking beforehand, and, and I was talking to a couple other pastors this morning. We we're talking about the uh, sermon text for this weekend. It's that uh, lawyer who comes up to Jesus to test him or to tempt him, and uh, to how how do I how do I earn or, or accomplish eternal life, uh, inherit eternal life? And so it's it's a really oxymoron statement, right? You know, what do I must what must I do to get an inheritance? And then Jesus he kind of knocks him off his pedestal a little bit and. And the lawyer, he comes back with vengeance, with a desire to what justify himself, to be right, and 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 uh, boy, that's not healthy. Because when we're justifying ourselves, then we actually are making ourselves into our own saviors, and so we become the savior to ourself. And man, I mean, I, I, to bleed and die for myself, and to to see all the sins that I can't even see in myself, and then and then to not only uh, bleed and die for myself, but to uphold myself as the master and commander of the universe, uh, as the sole meaning of the of the universe. Ah, oh, it's exhausting, you know, and it doesn't work. Um, it, it falls apart. And then not only when your ego takes a hold of you, not only does it not work, but you become a jerk to everyone else, and you're useless to everybody else. Right. I mean, you, you can find plenty of people who aren't religious that carry all the same ego. Um, you can go to all sorts of celebrities and watch them talk the talk and walk the walk. But it it, it almost sort of has a special kind of, of, of nasty taste when Christians do it too. But there, there's so much Christianity that, that's sort of dedicated towards this idea of becoming the right kind of person for you to sort of climb your way into heaven. And Jesus is having none of it. The lawyer walks up to him to test or to tempt God, which like, think about the position you're putting yourself in where you're right, going right. to see how he's doing. Um, when, when in reality, the Lord still flips it around, but, but still makes it about well, about Jesus. So he, he responds then to, to the man uh, with a, a parable about um, a, a good Samaritan, which I think everybody sort of knows pretty well by heart. Uh, but this isn't just to sort of test the lawyer and, and show the lawyer that he's not God, but it's also to, to show the lawyer who is. 
it, it's it's a blessed relief. Like it, it's not just sort of to knock you on your butt and take the wind out of your sails. And everybody loves to watch somebody who's too full of themselves fall a little bit uh, because we have our own secret egos. But but really though, what what's wonderful is that at, at the end of this, uh, it, it's a gift that our Lord would not let this thing rest on how much you can build. Yeah, yeah. It says that he has compassion. I mean, and you think about this that. Some of the most compassionate things the Lord Jesus can do is, again, it's to bring us to repentance, to drive us to a fine powder. Um, I can recall here, boy, it would have been several months ago. I just, I had one of those Sundays. It was just a really good Sunday. And 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 I just kind of went away from Sunday. I'm like, the sermon went well. The Bible study went well. My jokes, you know, with the parishioners, they just hit and they laughed, you know. And and uh, I had plenty of rest and I left the church and I just kind of kind of felt pretty good about myself. And I got home and I'm like, you know what? And I told my wife, I said, what do you think of the sermon? She's like, well, why are you asking? I'm like, oh, great. She's on to me. <laughs> you know, she's, on, she's on to me. And then, and then I posted it online, the sermon online. I'm like, I'm checking out how many hits did it get? Did it get shared enough times? And, and um, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for some text messages from some people in the church to tell me good job. And, and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, you're such a wretched sinner, Richard, such a wretched sinner. And my prayer was, Lord, bring me to suffering. I can't believe I prayed that. I mean, that's how stupid I am. I, I, number one, I'm stupid that my ego got the best of me. And then, then, then I prayed this prayer, Lord, give me suffering to center me uh, where I need to be. And sure enough, later that week, um, in the hospital with a prisoner who was dying, and I realized what an idiot I was and how stupid I was. And it's not about Matt Richard. It's not about the prisoner. It's about Jesus. Mm-hmm. And to be brought to that point. And suffered and suffered with them and uh, see the pain of death and the tears of death and the struggle of, of, of this old Adam, and the sinful nature, its work uh, and death itself. And at the very end, it's like, man, what a wretched man I am. Who will save me from this body, sin and death? And then you hear that gospel, Jesus, you know, the forgiveness of Christ and Jesus. And then so Jesus becomes our ego, if you will. Uh, yeah. What Paul says, right? What does Paul say? He says that we boast in Christ. And so boasting is not bad when it's in Christ, uh, but when we boast of ourselves, boy, we got to be knocked down that ladder, knocked off our pedestal and brought to a reality who we are so we can see Jesus. Right. The higher you build yourself up, the farther you got to fall. But but the thing is, we're building on he who, who actually took the lowest place. We're, we're building on him who bore the cross for sinners. Like that's that's our boast, the lowest thing that you can find. There's no falling off of that. Uh, and 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 there we, we have a, a Lord who who not only sort of fulfills all the things that we only wish we could, but but he does it for us. He, he gives us the resurrection. He gives us the glory. He gives us the salvation and all of it's it's free. It's, it's without the burden of having to, to carry it, to convince yourself it's true or even worse, to convince others. Yeah. I'm reminded of uh, uh, an old professor once. I, I heard the story. I, I, I wasn't there, but I heard the story of this professor who was talking about Jesus and how he put on human flesh to come amongst us. And he came so low so that no one would escape his grasp. And this professor took the chalk and his back in the days where he had chalk on the chalkboard, he walked out into the students and he got down on his knees and he started writing Jesus on the floor. Uh, can you imagine that? Writing Jesus on the floor. And he said, your savior came this low. He came beneath you under your feet so that you would not uh, you would not escape his grasp, uh, so that he would claim you very, very much at the bottom, not at the top, but at the very bottom, that he came that low for you. And that's our Jesus. Uh, so you think about this, Jesus, he did not, and he had every reason to have ego, Jesus did. I mean, he had every reason to to be at the top. And, and uh, my goodness, he's the son of God, he's sinless. Um, he's the God man, right? I mean, he speaks to water and water listens and, and waves listen and the nature and demons listen to him. Uh, diseases listen to him, death listens to him. He had every reason to be the top guy with a, with a chip on his shoulder. But what does he do? He, he comes so lowly that uh, sinners like us would never uh, escape his grasp. If you're the fallen man, thanks be to God. And, and that's us. So thanks be to God. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Boast in Christ. Our egos in Christ. Amen. Thanks, Pastor. It's great to have you. Yeah. Good to see you, Harrison. Take care.